Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to, well, yeah, this is the, the February 22nd, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And yeah, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. We do not make that one little two by four shift. Well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. More important than that, though, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. Let those fingers do the walking. Go ahead, send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, in our Tigers, then well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we got all the U.S. indices trading to the downside. The Dow's off 459, one to three tenths percent. S&P 48, one to one tenths percent. Nasdaq 100, 181, one to three tenths percent. Russell just over one percent or 22 points. The semis are off one and a quarter percent, 42 points. Trend is off one and three tenths, nearly 200 points. New York Stock Exchange is off 170. You got the spot politics well above its 50-day exponential moving average, trading out at thirty dollars and seventeen cents. The XAU is off just slightly. Gold's up. Seven bucks silver, thirty cents to the upside. Light speed crude, two thirty-two. Natural gas up fourteen pennies, and the thirty-year treasury is up eight ticks. She's trading out at one fifty-three oh nine. Lead the charge dollar-wise to the upside. You've got uh, Meritor Inc. up eleven bucks, forty-five percent. Dexcom up nine or two and a half percent. Boston Beer up nine, two and a half percent. Shockwave Medical about ten bucks, nine fifty up six and a half percent. And Roku up nine dollars. That's up about two and a half percent. Where did Roku go? It jumped all the way up to the uh, leader, uh, second leader. Up on the, in the on deck circle. To the downside is booking holdings, $91, 3.5%. Amazon, 51, 1 6 tenths percent. Mercado Libre, 51 bucks, 5%. Tesla's off 46, that's over 5%. Chipotle, 40 bucks, that's 2 and 6 tenths percent. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. No requests. Well, we do have one request so far. We'll do. We'll save that for the uh, next segment out there. And that was from uh, Tom. Wants to take a look at ticker symbol LTCN in case any of you want to do the work on that before we get to that chart. But let's go take a spin and uh, see what the markets are communicating to you and I uh, at this moment. So let's begin with. Let's do this. Uh, let's begin with things that people can easily do at home. So here's an easy chart to have set up. You should have set up. It's the four. Uh, it's four index ETFs. The SPY's in the upper left. The Q's the upper right. The uh, Dow Diamonds lower left. The uh, IWM the lower right. So what do we know? We know that in the case of the SPY's, the uh, Q's and the uh, Dow Diamonds are all trading into their. January 24th swing point. Now, the swing point for the Russell 2000 is actually January 28th, and price is still above that. Above that, meaning it's above 195.31. Now, price is pulled back into the SPIs, likely going to test the bottom, but still not a guarantee. That SPI number would be 420.76. You're pulling back on light volume. So far today, the volume is 51 million shares. That's going into 252 million shares. So a test and rejection of that level would be a buy signal. I'm not saying buy that signal. I'm saying that would be a buy signal. We don't have that as we speak just yet. The Qs may be the first one down there to test out that low. That low is 334.15. It did 200 million shares on that day. Today, so far, we had 42 million shares. If we look at the Dow Diamonds, trading down into that same swing point. The low of that would be 331.35. Volume so far today, 4.2 million shares versus 29 million shares from January 24th. So the theme here is 
There is a theme. It's price pushing lower with lighter volume. Even the IWM, which has not made it down to its swing point, which is the January 28th level, the high of that is 195.31. The volume on that day was 65 million. You're at 15 million as we speak today. So what it's signaling to us is that there shouldn't be, doesn't mean that it can't close below, but right now we don't see the volume to take out those lows, at least not at 111 in the afternoon. There's nothing that's been tested when we take a look at the index ETFs, we'll see something different when we look at the uh, equity futures charts out there. But with regard to the index ETFs out here, there's been nothing that's tested. If we take a look at the sectors with inside the S&P 500, as well as the SPY itself, we don't need to do that. We can take a look at the number one sector, weighted sector, that is. And that's the technology sector. Uh, he or she is pushing in at January 24th swing point. Volume today is 8 million shares. That swing has 33 million shares. The healthcare sector, XLV, pushing into that swing point. Not all the way down there yet. Volume today, 6.6 .6 million versus 37 million. The XLY, the XLY is trading below. It's uh, Well, it's not trading below. It's trading into that January 24th swing point. That did 15 million shares. You're at 6.8 today. That's probably the closest that we've seen so far from a volume standpoint. That's coming from the consumer discretionary sector. The XLF, nowhere near the bottom of its, or nowhere near even the high of the January 24th low out there. That high, by the way, is 38.39. The low so far today is uh, 38.81. So no test in that realm. The XLC, that's a sector that's got Facebook in it. Facebook is just trashed, thrashed. It's trading below last year's low. That is as bearish as you can get on a stock out here. In the case of the XLC, it has taken out its, with light volume, it has taken out that low from the uh, January 24th session. So what did I just say there? I said those lows can be taken out with light volume. You know, you need a test and a rejection out here. Uh, we don't have that certainly in the XLC, but I'm just really referring back to the other sectors that we were just taking a look at, each coming down with lighter volume. The uh, consumer staples sector, back inside that January 24th swing point, that did volume of 25 million. You're only at 9.9 .9 million shares. Again, light in the loafers. The energy sector, although pulling back, it's just pulling back to test the support of the bottom of its daily profile, which is at 66.73. You're at 66.97 right now. If we take a look at the real estate sector, it too, like the XLC, trading below the January 24th swing point. Now, a much lighter volume, 3.1 million shares versus 6.4. You trade below it, you can still head lower. The utility sector also testing out its swing point, which did volume of 24 million shares. You're testing as we speak right now with 7.6. And finally, the uh, material sector, the XLB, trading inside that swing point, January 24th, much lighter volume. We've done volume today of 5.8 million shares versus 20. So if we're looking for volume to give us a signal that price is going to take out those lows, crush them, generate some types of confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside, we're not seeing it in any of the sectors with inside the S&P 500. We're not seeing it inside the spies. We're not seeing it inside the Qs. We're not seeing it inside the diamonds. Really, we're not seeing it inside the IWM either. So when we get back to this breakout here. Well, we've got a caller on the line. It's one of our... Uh, one of our early birds uh, when we uh, do the show at 8 o'clock, and that is Brent in Martinez, California. So when we get back from this break, we're going to get Brent online and answer any question that he has about the market. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education. Investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. You got the Dow down 500, S&P's off 50. Let's go out to Martinez, California, and speak with Brent. Hey, Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? How was your weekend? Oh, I'm doing great, Steve. I had a real nice weekend. How was yours? It was uh, it was really nice. I uh, just enjoyed it and the weather down here. One of my favorite times of the year, I think, is uh, nice, cool evenings. And I had cool, you know, for us, it's in the low 70s out there, but just, just beautiful out here. So... Uh, uh, thanks for asking. And uh, you wanted to talk uh, about the markets in general, per se. So uh, tell me how I can best help you. What, what is it you'd like to discuss? I was hoping you could bring back up that uh, the first one you're looking at, the four panel that had the SPY, the, the diamonds, the triple Qs, and then the, the Russell. Absolutely. And it just seemed yeah, to me, good. if you looked at least the diamonds, the SPY, and the triple Qs, there was, in addition to what you're looking at, there seemed to be a, uh, AB equals CD pattern that was, you know, in progress there. And I just wondered if you could project that out and see where that would tie into those levels that you were looking at. So you're referring to a smaller A to B equals CD. Is that correct? The one that in essence would start in, in the spies from uh, February 9th. Is that what you're looking at? Yeah, it's the smaller one you can see on there that, that I mean, it's Got pretty it. obvious it's on the, you know, more the right hand side of the chart. Just want to, so here's the A to B equals C to that Brent's referring to. The one to one level on that would take us down into the 425.51 area, and the 11.272 would get you down to 419.38. Is that what you're? Is that what you're looking at? Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Perfect. So if you just look at uh, just simply our typical volume perspective, the 14th, which would be the B point of that pattern, had 123 million shares. You close below with 132 on uh, Friday. So there's your confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. So those would be two of the price projection areas. Obviously, there would be a third to fourth uh, because, folks, with the A to B equals CD pattern, we wait for a bullish reversal candle to confirm when the pattern has completed out there. But those are your projection areas. And I've lifted the chart up just a tad so that you can see the other areas, which would be the 1.618 at the 411 and then uh, 402 at the 2 level. Uh, any questions about the spot? Do you want me to do that for the other uh, any of the other ETFs? Or each of the other ETFs? Yeah, if you don't mind, yeah, yeah, the diamonds and the triple Qs would be great just to see. I sure. assume it'll be something, you know, quite like that. Yeah, so the case of the Qs out here, 
Um, and I'll just use the conservative A to B equals CD pattern out here. So what I would be doing, folks, is I'd be using the, the high from February 9th. And if you're at home, you want to use the high from uh, February 2nd. That's okay, too. There's nothing wrong with, with that. Uh, and so here's the A to B equals CD. Now, in this case, the one-to-one -one takes us well below the January 24th low. When I say well below, 334.15. Oh, I take that back. <laughs> That's interesting. So 334.15, Brent, is the low. 334.17 would be the one-to-one -one A to B equals CD pattern. 327, 94, the 1.272, the 1.618 would get us to 320. And the, the, the two level, the one-to-two, would get us to 311.25. So any questions about that A to B equals CD run? Yeah, I just think that's interesting, and we don't know if it'll stop at a one-to-one, -one, but there is that potential where that'll be those two things converging, and, and we'd have to see some kind of a bullish reversal, of course, to, to uh, you know, kind of see some kind of a change in, in that, you know, pattern. But uh, it's interesting. That's what I wanted to see, that projection. Perfect. So let me, uh, I don't know where my A to B equals CD tool went for the Dow Diamonds, but I'm going to get that back here momentarily. If you give me a second, you should be able to find it pretty quickly, and we'll draw that A to B equals CD pattern in. And, um, yeah, you know, the the only reason that we would so yes we'd like to see that daily reversal signal the only way to get a quicker jump on that would be to see some kind of turn on an intraday time frame chart and for there we would really look to the equity futures in the case of the dow diamonds it is uh, at the one to one level right now now one to one level would get us to 335.85 or 335.94 the 1.272 gets you down towards the bottom of that january 24 swing point the january 24 swing point is 331.35 the one to 1.272 330 180. So yes, good point here, uh, Brent, in picking up those A to B equals CD patterns that could identify or signal to us a, a bottom out there. In the case of the uh, the Russell 2000, I just expand this out and let's uh, just finish this thing off. It's A to B equals CD pattern would look like this. The A point out here would be on the trading day of February 10th. The B point is low on February 14th. The C point is retracement up into February 16th. And price is already at the one-to-one -one level. The next area would be 1.272, and that would be at 194.79. And 195.31 is the top of its profile, at uh, the top of its high, which is the swing point from January 28th in uh, 2022 out there. So yes, those are the A to B equals CD patterns that we're taking a look at. What, what's that next? That was it, Steve. No, yeah, that was it. That, that really is helpful. I'm just going to, it's just something else to be watching potentially. And, and uh, again, we have to see some kind of a, you know, reversal to, to, you know, give us some hope that that is, you know, played out and, and uh, we're going to get a turn. If not, if it blows through all those levels, then <laughs> it's got, you know, more to go. It looks like. Yeah. So if I was going to your instinct, uh, just, you know, just an instinctive question. Do you do you think that what's going on in Russia and Ukraine is just a kind of um, I refer to it as a geopolitical event? Or is it something that you think that the U.S. could get dragged into some type of some type of military war of some sort? Oh, for me personally, I'd rather they yeah. protect their own border. Yeah, I think yes. that's, you know. That's a little more relevant to me. You know, we need to take over our own country first. We don't need to be getting involved in something that's, you know, way out of our <laughs> area of needing to deal with. But that's just me personally. No, but, and so I'm asking, no. and the reason, the, the, the question actually, I, I, should have, I should have posed it a, a little bit better, is the, the outcome in the markets would be two completely different things if it is a, if this is nothing more than just some type of geopolitical event, which would basically mean the U.S. is not too involved in it, or is this some type of something else, something more along the lines of a, you know, what, what do you think it might, is more likely to turn into? Yeah, but do you have any, do you yeah, have any thoughts on that? I, yeah, I, I just think personally, yeah, we'll see what happens. I, I think it's, I think there's other things going on personally, uh, uh, underlying issues with inflation and a, a lot of other things. And the market it had a huge run up, so I'm not surprised to see the thing pulling back. I think that's another kind of excuse to maybe people to go after the market. I, I have no idea. I just, yeah, I, I'm looking to just take advantage of some of these bounces we're having, but I'm not that surprised to see the market taking the hit that it has. Yeah, the reason I would say that, and that's really, it's really just a, for me, just to kind of a as is a way to to take your discussion in essence to the next level in in my in my head. You're looking for these A to B equals C D patterns that could 
generate some type of bottom signal for us. And I would say if this is nothing more than just some type of geopolitical event, then I think that's a good path to be on. I think if this is something bigger than that, that could lead to some type of more of a military involvement or something, and then the markets are likely, that then the patterns that you and I are looking at probably are insignificant. And that the markets, just simply my study of military skirmishes and wars and how the stock market responds inside the U.S., being able to answer that question, Brent, I think is the most important thing that we could do. I don't have the answer to it. I have an instinct, but I don't have the answer to it. So I just thought, hey, why don't I just check with uh, check with you as well? So um, uh, sorry about that. Uh, but uh, hey, thanks for the call. You're welcome, Steve. Have yourself a great day and a great week, okay? Sounds great. That was Brent in Martinez, California. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So if we take a look at this chart up I've got that I've got on the screen, it's the Dow. And uh, the, uh, the, the purple lines are basically meant to represent the January bottoms that we typically see in the side of the stock market. So those of you that are familiar with my seasonal chart, 
um, that you know takes a look at the Dow over the last uh, 85, 86 years out there. We know that the Dow typically tops in the early part of January, makes a bottom in the end of January. So these purple lines out here, uh, not, not not every year do we do we see that pattern play out. So the blue arrows that I have on my screen out here, they're representing those time periods. It's not always the end of. It's not always January 30th as an example. Sometimes a little before. Sometimes it's a little bit after. You know, looking for bottom patterns that uh, complete near that same time frame. So I'm going to turn off those purple. I'm going to try to. Let me see if, if this is, is uh, time cycles, I think. Yeah, that should do it. Okay, so now we've got those turned off. And you've got the blue arrows are the ones where I where I could visually, you and I, could easily see those January bottoms out here. Now, what's really important is and we're looking at the Dow. This is the cash indice out here. And that's what the, that's where my work on that seasonal chart came from. So we can see, and this is based upon the low. So I've got this set up. This is not the close. I'm looking at the lows out here because I want to understand. And really, Brent, the discussion that Brent and I just had were really about the lows. And his question was a good question, by the way. You know, is this forming some type of uh, buy the D point as price gets back to target or test those lows out there? But here's what we can see. If we take a look at, so we can see how those lows are really important. If you take a look at 2021, for example, that was the bottom of the stock market. If you take a look at 2020, that was not the bottom of the stock market because that uh, February 2020th COVID crash, as soon as price got below that, certainly led to lower price out here. You had a nice uh, uh, bounce back in 2018. Uh, you probably that, that area it ended up getting tested again, but tested and rejected. Price moved higher. If you go back to 2017, you had that low come in. Markets moved higher. The same thing in 2016. The same thing really in 2015, although it was really a consolidation here towards the end of the year, August. Um, price was able to take out that high. You come back here to the 2014 level. So you see this this high is really important. So, so, so far, or the low, I should say. So far, as we've taken a look at it, the only low that was really penetrated and lost was the 2021. Now, if we pull this chart back just a tad further, out here. We'll get into the 2006, 2007, 2008 time frame. Here in 2008, we had a January low. That level got taken out in the March time frame. That ended up leading to lower price. We had the same thing took place in 2009. We did. We had that nice January bottom come in uh, in uh, 2010. Remember, we had the 2000 flash crash in May. Uh, that low was ended up being taken out. So the low is really important for us. Now, again, this is just a closing low that we're taking a look at out here inside of the Dow. It has not been taken out but the insinuation should be or would be that if in fact we see a close below that low that is spelling you know real trouble real trouble could be an a to b a larger a to b equal cd to the downside that brent and i did not draw in at that stage so watching these lows is really important yes price is coming down with lighter volume out there but we did see where those lows have been taken out in a couple of the uh uh, and a couple of these sectors inside of the S&P 500. So let's do this. We've got a number of questions that have come in. I don't want to get too far behind on those. And uh, so let's uh, get to those uh, first. The first one coming in from Tom G. Tom writes in, he says, I'm wondering your thoughts on a long position in ticker symbol LTCN. That is grayscale Litecoin out here. Uh, you played it about a month ago and you're looking to get back in. As always, big thanks. You're welcome. So if we take a look at light, light LTCN, Litecoin, Grayscale, so-and-so, it's about, and really, you know what I do, Tom, here is I'm not is that interested in looking at the, uh, looks like this was a reverse merger of some sort or what, I, I don't know what it was, but the, the long-term charts aren't really helpful to us. So on the daily time frame, you can see that right now price is trading below the bottom of its daily profile, and uh, no surprise here, it's trading into its swing point low, January 27th, which was for this instrument, January 24th for many instruments out there. Uh, it's trading inside that swing point, and if it closed today below, 569 you're at 558 right now you know tom price could get down and, and easily test that low now i say easily when we pull over the white background charts this tells us well maybe not so easily or it would be easily if it can close below the red oscillator and change line. So the oscillator and change line on this instrument is currently priced at 542. A close below a red oscillator and change line, that then signals to you and I that you have a falling price oscillator below zero. That's a bearish pattern signal. And that would suggest that price would get down and test that low from the 28th out here, or the 27th, 27th, 28th. That when it did form a bottom out here was a nice Roads Mentum indicator signal as well as a TD9 count. But what uh, happened out here, uh, 
uh, Tom, is that price ran right into the resistance level at 766. That was the TD9 breakdown area. So is this a place to enter or buy this uh, instrument here? You know, if we go to the short-term time frames, looking for signals, here's a 30-minute chart. I don't see anything here to suggest that you do that. I don't really see much in the way. I mean, I do have wave number seven that's confirmed on a 65-minute chart, but price well below. It also broke through a TD9 count bottom. Price more likely headed to 518. So the answer to your question, when I take a look at the daily charts, the intraday charts, I don't see it. I don't see it in the cards just yet. If you wanted to buy price testing that oscillator and change line, that would be the signal. Um, but I'm not seeing that in the short-term time frame charts to suggest that. So I do hope that helps you out, uh, Tom. Thanks so much for the call, or the uh, request out there, and have a great day. The next one coming in from uh, JT in uh, New York. And uh, you've got a lot of DSL. The price is down. What price do you recommend buying more? So that's one of the shippers out there. I was actually looking at uh, Nordic American tankers. That's uh, one that uh, we get a call about periodically. I believe it's from one of our one of our members over in the on the west coast in Florida. I think it might be Sarasota, uh, but uh, it was showing some some definite bottoming signals. So, with regard to DSL double line income solution, oh, that's not a shipper. For some time, I thought. DSW maybe or something. In any event, doesn't matter. But what this is doing is trading into that swing point from January 24th. JT, it did volume on that day of 1.4 million shares. I'm rounding up. You're pulling back with light volume, 300,000 shares so far. You're trading below the bottom of its daily profile, 1496. Odds favor that it's going to go test that level. Now, a test rejection of the 1465 level on less than uh, 1.37 uh, million shares out there. That could be or should be a buy signal to you. You'd like to have something more than that if you can. So can you get that? Well, as we open up the daily charts today, it's going to be bar number eight. So this did form with bar number seven. That's letter G, a road momentum indicator signal. And what that did in the case of DSL was price ran right up into where the counter trend rally should have ended. The center of its bearish structured bullish profile. And that was at 1590. So what you know, no matter what, uh, JT, is that your resistance level is going to be 1590. You really need to see it close above 1646 in order for this to say, hey, I'm on my merry way to the upside. But you've got bar number eight pulling into a swing point with light volume. We know that. The, so wait for tomorrow. See if this forms the TD9 count pattern. And that would either be the low of today, the low of tomorrow, or it could be the low of uh, Thursday out there because we are beginning the week on a Tuesday where that bottom could come in. So you'd like to see that bottom along with a test rejection on that uh, swing point with lighter volume. And maybe that's your trigger in. On a weekly time frame chart out here, it's saying, man, hold your horses, boys and girls. And the reason is because last week was a TD9 count. And if and it was the bar following bar number nine. And if price closes below that low, that low, by the way, this week I'm referring to, at 15 bucks even, Stephen, and that's saying this thing wants to head even lower. So you're at kind of a critical juncture here. We should know something by Thursday out there. So, JT, I do hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in. Have a terrific Tuesday. And, uh, folks, we'll be back in just a few. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. we got a couple of questions in the queue here. This one coming in from Jared L. Jared says, I'm in MO for a long-term position, hopefully. Do you see any strength or weakness here? And uh, where should I have a uh, stop? So let's go take a look at this ticker symbol out here. Let's get our multiple time frames, our three time frames up here for Jared. And uh, we've got this Altria group, by the way. Right now, it's trading above the top of its daily profile. Uh, that's an old resistance that appears to become new support out here. So you were asking... Um, strength or weakness but that's strong when you trade above the top of a bearish structured profile so that looks pretty good on a weekly basis price is uh, trying to get through the top of its daily profile a weekly profile that is 5137 so a close above that this week would be helpful and then a close above 5259 would also be helpful that's the top of the monthly profile so you're above the top of the daily trading into the top of the weekly Traded up towards the top of the monthly. So really, 52.59, you're talking about long term, is really what you'd like to see with regard to a continued move higher. As I look at the uh, daily, weekly, and monthly white background charts, they could be signaling a, a confirmed road momentum indicator top. Now, I just said the price was over the top of the daily profile, which is bullish. That's true. So what we really have out here, JL, is a neutral signal. The signal changes from neutral to more of a bearish or expected retracement. If there's a close below 5095, the top of that profile, that would then give you targets of 5044 to the downside, 4943, or even 4705. So you want to watch the, you know, the action over the next couple of days. You've got really what we'll call a neutral signal as we speak. In the case of the weekly, you had a TD9 count. No, you don't have a TD9 count. You don't have any kind of a pattern out here other than the top of that profile. So nothing bearish there. And the monthly time frame, also nothing bearish there. So really, I'd be paying attention to the uh, daily time frame chart, JL. So I hope that that helps you out. And best of luck to you with uh, Altria. Ticker symbol there is MO. Let's go out to uh, Niagara Falls and speak with Michael. Mike, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? How is, uh, how is uh, winter up there? It's rainy here, but we're surviving. Okay, good, good. Uh, I want to look at XOP. P is yeah. in Putin. Yeah. It's a spider oil and gas fund. What you doing? How can I help you? And I'm thinking that with this uh, Russian-Ukraine crisis, uh, I realize that many of the, the uh, senior intermediate uh, multinationals have a huge exposure to Russia. Shell, BP, Exxon, you know, with sanctions coming, maybe, just maybe, oil's topped out. Well, um, I, I don't know the answer to that question other than take a look at what's going on from a chart perspective out yeah. here. And so, so in the from, on XOP, P is yeah. in Putin. 
Putin. Well, the P is in Putin is headed to 103.54. And the reason that I suggest that is because there's on a daily time frame chart, there's a small little rising trend line that price has broken through. And that broken through then, and this was a bearish structured daily profile, that should at least take us back to support. Now, one level of support is 103.54. That's the bottom of the daily. A second level of support is 101.88. That is the bottom of the weekly profile. And then below that, the third level of support would be 100.20. And that would be the top of the monthly profile. The fourth level to be watching would be 90.82. If yeah. uh, this is going to be something of significance, price would need uh -huh. to close below the 90.82 area out here. So, um, if, with regard to, let me see, let me pull over the other charts, see if there's some kind of topping patterns on the yeah, daily chart. Yeah, that middle chart looks really nice. I love that diagonal support level. Well, yeah, but that's way down there in the 60 buck level. Uh, if we do take a look at XOP, another area, so I'd give you one other figure for where price could pull back and find support, and that would be 102.24. So this identified, this formed a, a TD9 count top, was bar number eight that identified the top. And uh, so its levels of support are the bottom of the profile, 103.54, 102.24 is its TD9 count breakout level. If it closed below the 102.24, what this is signaling to you, Michael, is that it uh -huh. does want to uh, trade lower. So, so your instinct right now is to trade this to the downside? Yeah. So you've got your support areas out here. Uh, I think you probably... everything's baked in. I think all, all the negative, the, the, the entire conflict is all baked in. It's, you know, buy the rumor, sell the news. So we've had oil, uh, which is the top performing sector, and the energy sector, the XLE, top performing sector. The XOP, I believe, has probably been the top performing sector this year. And, yeah. uh, you know, and that began that began last year as well, and it just continued on. And at, at this stage, I have to anticipate that that move higher was had nothing to do with the anticipation of some type of skirmish in, in Russia. So uh -huh. maybe maybe by taking it to that level where you're basing this, you know, on the XOP, the P part of it, maybe that's yeah. really not the case. Because when I take a look at this set of charts out here, Michael, if uh -huh. we did see a close above 94.10 in Lightsweed Crude, then where Lightsweed Crude wants to head to over time is 140.82. See, I don't oh, see anything. On. 140.82? So what kind of a premium are you putting on the, the Russian-Ukraine crisis then? What's the oil premium on that? Well, when you say oil premium, if they if if uh, Europe stops getting its natural gas or oil from uh, from Russia, um, they import they import it from Qatar, yeah. from the Middle oh, East. Oh, perhaps. And but the LNG again, ships. I just I just I just take a look at what lights we crude, what the charts are communicating to you and I, what buyers and sellers are communicating <laughs> to you and I, and what I'm sharing with you is simply if price can close above 94.10, we're yeah. staring at 140.82. And above 140.82, 177.65. And then we're I heading don't back to July 2008. Who's heading back to July 2008? Well, that's what you're, 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 you're anticipating. Where were we back in July 2000? We went up to 147, didn't we? On crude, back in 2008? Oh, we, yeah, we know. We, uh, 2008, uh, we went up to 200. I'm I'm sorry, no, yeah, yeah, I think we went up to 147 in uh, uh, around 4th of July 2008. Then well, plunge. you know what? Yeah, yeah. So, so I, you know, what I have to do is I'd have to go back and try to pull up that futures contract, which I can't, yeah, yeah. it's not going to be that easy for me to do here during the show. So I'm using a version of the continuous contract. So you, you, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. very well may be right. I just would have to go back and, and pull up that historical chart out there. But regardless okay. of where price was, okay, yeah. regardless of where price was, uh, everything price is trading above the top of its daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly profiles yeah. out there. It's above the sellers, and there's no reason for it to not continue to move higher out there. So that's what I see. But that's what's mm -hmm. beautiful about the markets. You've got to have a buyer and you've got to have a seller. Okay. And, and right um, now, I'd be, I'd be all right. I'd, Thank you very much. Yeah. You bet. Hey, Michael, thanks so much for calling. That was Michael in Niagara Falls. And, folks, if you've ever seen the falls when they were frozen, that is one of the most beautiful wonders of the uh, world out there. Of course, if you're watching it uh, live while it's frozen, chances are you're freezing while you're watching it outside. In any event, let's go to the next question. This one coming in from JL. JL says he wants to take a look at OCGN. So let's go look at its three time frame charts out here. OCGN. And that is... 
Ocugen Inc. out here. Having a nice day. So price is above the top of its daily profile. The top of that daily profile is 401. We're at 441. You've got volume behind the move out here. So what this tells us, JL, is that price should target 549. Now, 549 is the top of its weekly profile. This is inside a bullish structured profile. A close of a 403 this week is what would give you that signal that price should make its way up into that uh, 549 level. And I'm taking a look at the daily time frame chart right now. 432, we'll come back. We'll take a look at this chart if we get back from this break. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So thanks to our polar bear, David White. Uh, he gave me a link and showed 179.90 was uh, back in June of 2018 was the high for light sweet crude. Back to OCGN for JL, who's long this position. So right now what price is doing, it's trying to take out the resistance level of $4.32. 432, we're trading at 434, is the TD9 breakdown level. So that's the area that you want to see price get above. If you get a close above that, then that says that price continues to run higher now the next higher my white background chart would take you up to that double of six dollars and 66 cents out there the weekly time frame chart um i don't have much out here to assist us with so nothing there other than price running into resistance that's its red oscillator and change line so right now what you've got going on inside of ocgn as good as it looks 
as nice as the uh, bar looks today, as nice as the volume is behind it, you're at the uh, battleground area, both on the uh, daily and the weekly time frame. So best of luck to you. Hector and the fuel injectors want to close out the show by taking a look at uh, ticker symbol COP. So let's get that. I'm only going to be able to get the daily time frame chart up on my screen out here. But ConocoPhillips, much like we took a look at the XOP, uh, having a, a big move lower. Now, this is trading below the bottom of its daily profile out here. And uh, the volume on uh, today's move is uh, so far 4.8 million shares. But, you know, what is it going into? It's going into about 8.5 million shares. But nonetheless, it's trading below support. Let's see if it's also trading below support areas on the daily chart out here. And voila, as we speak, 86.36 is going to be the key level there, Hector and Patty. That is the TD9 count breakout level. So COP forms a TD9 count and Rhodes momentum indicator top. That has brought price back to its breakout level of 86.36. So close below 86.36 and COP is going to suggest lower price. You've got a brand new weekly profile that's attempting to form. So if we get that close, then the projection that I would suggest would be 77.80 on any further move lower. But you don't have that confirmed signal. You'll get that if you see it close below 86.36 for ticker symbol COP. Folks, thanks so much for joining me today on Terrific Tuesday. Hope everybody had a, a wonderful uh, weekend out there. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. It might be at uh, 8 a.m. sharp out there. Uh, if not, I'll be here. Either way, I'll make sure the show is uh, is playable for the 1 o'clock time frame. Have a terrific Tuesday, folks. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's